Good morning, church. I pray that everybody is doing awesome. We are going Facebook Live. I'm going to open us up in prayer, and uh, then I'll just explain everything that we're doing, and uh, we're going to rock and roll. Lord, we thank you. We love you, God. We praise you. We give you honor and glory, my King. We just ask, Jesus, that you move today in an insane way, Lord. God, we ask that you do the miraculous in our lives, in our communities, in the church, in this world. God, we pray, Lord, that you will show people that you rule and reign and that you sit on the throne, my Lord. God, we lift up our nation. We lift up... Um, our president now, we lift up our president to be, my Lord Jesus, God. We just ask that the uh, um, transition period is awesome and smooth, Lord. God, we just pray that as Christians, whether uh, um, you voted yay or nay, God, that uh, we will cover our president now and we will cover our president to be, Lord Jesus. And we just thank you for the great things that you're going to do, my Lord Jesus, despite who's, uh, who is or isn't in the White House. And God, let us as Christians, God, to uh, form a unity, God, and a, um, just a prayer life for our nation and our nation's leaders, God, starting with our president, Lord. So we just thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. But church, man, we praise God for you guys. Um, we thank you for tuning in. We are just kind of closing down for uh, for right now for about a week um, with just a, there's a bunch of uh, uh Corona stuff popping up here and there. We have uh, some people who uh, who are going through testings um, um, in our church family. So what we wanted to do was just play it safe and uh, 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 not meet together for this week. We didn't want anybody to come to church and uh, uh, be possibly exposed if somebody in the church is positive. We wanted to make sure that everybody was going to be safe and sound. So that's why we're doing what we're doing. Does it stink? 100%. But, uh, but more than you guys being here, I care more for your safety. Um, I care for the uh, uh, safety of my family and uh, the safety of this church and our community. So we just decided that it would be honorable to the Lord to make sure that everybody was safe and sound because we could praise him here together or we could praise him together via Facebook and that's what we're doing. Um, so we're just going to start, man. We're going, we are still in our sermon series uh, uh, called Whisper. Um, it's been awesome. Um, we've gotten a lot of uh, positive feedback. We've gotten a lot of people who uh, are saying that they're starting to hear God in different ways, and that's been the whole purpose of this sermon series. But, uh, but I want to start off with, uh, with asking, you guys, asking you guys a question. What is it that God is saying to you? Like, what is it that God has been putting inside of you? And truth be told, church, if your answer is, I don't know, then my next question to you is going to be, why? Like, why don't you know? Because the truth of the matter is, God is not silent. And despite what it is that we want to believe, we have to understand, whether you want to believe it or not, God is not mute. What we do know is that God went mute one time and only one time in history for about 400 years. But then God broke the silence of him being mute with the cry of a baby, right? So we have to understand that. That he began to, uh, uh, he stopped speaking, but then God started speaking again, right? And the moment that God started to speak to us again through the cries of the baby, we have to understand that he speaks to us in so many different languages and in so many different forms. So what we have to begin to do is grab a hold of that. Grab a hold that our God speaks and is not mute. So if your answer is that you're not sure what he's saying to you and or that he's just not saying anything to you, then I would have to say that truth of the matter is you're wrong. Because again, God is always, always speaking to us. The problem comes in church is with us. Because he's always speaking to us, but the us part of this whole conversation oftentimes is not listening to God. And, and we begin to understand through scripture that he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen, right? Like we believe that. As, as soldiers of Christ, as those who are, in an in, who are in an intimate relationship with Jesus, we believe that he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Okay? We also see in scripture that Hebrews 1.1 1, 1 says that he, meaning God, spoke to our ancestors, 
through the prophets at many times and in various ways. So we see that God from, from the ancient days to today speaks through prophets many different times, but also he speaks to us in so many different ways, so many different forms, so many different styles, so many different languages. And here's why I believe that we don't hear God. Now, what I want to point out, too, is I said that this is why I believe we don't hear God. I did not say this is why I believe we don't hear from God. We are hearing from God every single day. The problem is, is we don't hear God, okay, if, 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 if that makes sense. And here's why I believe that we don't hear God. I believe the reason why we don't hear God is because we expect God to only speak to us through one way. We only expect God to speak to us in the way that we oftentimes speak to other people. We only think that for some reason God can only speak to us audibly. Like that, that, that he has no other forms of communication to relate to us. No other forms of communication to speak to us. And the reason why we believe that truth be told is, is to quote Jesus is because we are so dull. I love scripture. So many times he would ask his disciples, are you so dull? Are you so dull? Are you so dull? So we have to understand that we only expect God for some reason to speak to us audibly when that is not the only forms of communication that God has to deal with us in. If God blessed us with people and the wisdom of people to create sign language as a means to communicate with people who can't hear and or can't talk, don't we think that God is smart enough to talk to us in different ways. If God created animals who speak through sounds, ultrasounds, infrasounds, if he created these animals to speak to one another in, in different ways other than audibly, then don't you think that God is God enough to speak to us in other languages and in other types than just using his voice? And this is what's so cool to me, and honestly, this is what has kind of sparked this, ser uh, uh, this sermon for today, um, um, is I was reading last night about elephants. <laughs> and elephants can communicate uh, using low-frequency sounds. And it's, they use these pitches in their voice that is actually out of the range, it's below the range of human hearing. And it's called uh, infrasounds. And these infrasounds that elephants will begin to use will travel several miles away from one another. And this is awesome. And they liken it to human humming. Right now, we can hear human humming, obviously. But they, the w same way that we hum is the same way that they use these vocal cords or, or vocal folds to send out this vibration from their lungs out into the open to communicate communicate with fellow ele elephants and here's what's so cool to me is it is a private they call it a private communication channel and this is how elephants begin to communicate as as they develop their social life amongst one another and this is cool to me because it makes me realize how amazing our God is God desires to have a private channel of communication with each and every single one of us. And, and when I say private language, I'm not just talking about that of tongues. See, when we speak in tongues in the utterance of Holy Spirit, when we begin to speak in tongues, we have to understand that is our private language to God. But God wants to have a private language with us. So he wants to communicate with us and he communicates with us in so many different ways. So we have to understand that. But the problem is oftentimes we deafen ourselves to the ways that he desires to, to communicate with us. We get stuck in the mindset that verbal communication is the only form of communication. But the truth is that's so wrong. We as a people... We as a nation, we as the world, we communicate to one another in so many other ways other than verbal communication. 
So if we could do that as, as the people, if we could do that as the creation, then why would we be so naive to believe that the creator cannot communicate to us in other ways other than just verbal communication? If he created every living creature and he created a, a, um, a communication between every living creature, then why don't we think that our God communicates in so many different ways other than verbal? It drives me crazy when people always want to link uh, uh, hearing from God as, as a verbal because we hear from God in so many other ways. But we have to be open to receive his communication. I can tell Cindy, uh, I can tell Boo Kitty, man, how, that I love her in multiple different ways, right? I could tell her uh, audibly. I could tell her with my voice, I love you. I could, uh, I could tell her with my hands, right, in sign language. I could tell her with my eyes, right? I could tell her with my lips, right? So you could tell somebody that you love them in so many different ways. I could tell her with my face. Right? So, so we got all these different forms of communication to let somebody know what it is that we want to tell them. And I never one time have to use words to do so. So I say all this because I want us to grab a hold. Do not tune God out because you're expecting God to speak to you in one way. Don't, don't be blind to a physical uh, communication that God's trying to give you because you're so uh, uh, focused on hearing him audibly, right? You have to be open to the different forms of communication that God wants to speak because oftentimes we'll deafen him out, we'll tune him out because we're only expecting him to speak to us one way when the whole time he's actually been trying to get our, our attention and has been communicating with us in a totally different way. God can and does speak to his people in strange, mysterious, crazy ways, right? We, we gather that. He spoke to Moses through a burning bush. He spoke to Pharaoh uh, uh, through signs and wonders, through the ten plagues. He spoke to Hezekiah through an illness. He spoke through a donkey, so God can speak to us in different ways. He spoke to the wise men who were seeking after Jesus. And he spoke to them through stars. And I said it earlier, but I'll say it again. He spoke to the world through a cry of a baby named Jesus. So we have to remember, church, that God speaks in different types of languages. In different forms of communication. And with that being said, we also have to understand that the way God speaks to me might not be the way that God speaks to you. So what we have to begin to do as individuals in Christ is we have to ask him, God, how are you wanting to communicate with me? We have to seek him in, in forms of communication. And then what we have to do, man, is we have to shut up and we have, to, we have to begin to listen to what it is that God is wanting to say. Ask, seek, and listen. God is God enough to speak in so many different ways, just like there is so many different types of people. Right? So we have to grab a hold of that. And again, uh, um, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying that, that God can't speak uh, audibly. He can. But that's not the only form of communication that God is going to speak to you. And so, so, so what? You've never heard God's audible voice before. That doesn't make you any more or any less of a Christian. That doesn't make you any more holy or less holy than, than the person who has or hasn't. It doesn't matter how you hear God. Just as long as you're hearing God. Because God speaks to us every single day as his sons and his daughters. There is not a day that goes by that I do not speak to my children. So, so too, why would we begin to believe that there is a day that goes by that God would not speak to us? The question is, what form of communication is God using? 
See, sometimes I, I get to, uh, uh, right now, uh, 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 with the, just the hectic and the busyness of the schedule, sometimes when I get home, uh, Grace and, and Everby will be asleep. So the only one I get to audibly speak to when it comes to my children, the only one that I get to audibly speak to is Elias. Me and Elias will have a conversation. I might go in the room with them when I first get home and, and just love on them for a minute and play a, a, a game of Halo with them uh, uh, for a minute. And then I'll leave that, I'll leave that and I'll, I'll go have a, a, a dinner with, uh, with wifey. And then after I eat dinner, I'll go into Grayson's bedroom. And, and what I do, man, is, is as he's asleep, I rub his hair and I give him a kiss on his forehead and I tell him how much it is that I love him. I pray over him. I'll do the same with Everby. Right, so I verbally spoke to Elias, but I was using other forms of communication to speak to my two babies who were asleep. And here's what's amazing to me, is generally with Grace and not so much with uh, uh, Everby, but uh, uh, generally when I kiss Grayson on his forehead, nine times out of ten, he actually begins to wake up. And he'll smile at me, he'll give me a hug, he'll tell me he loves me, and just like that, he's asleep again. But it blesses me because I think to myself, what woke him up was my communication of a kiss on his forehead. How is it that God wakes you up? In a, in a, in a different type of communication. It might not be audibly, but it might be that kiss on the forehead. It might be that feeling in your heart. It might be that, that uh, a warmth feeling you get when you know that his presence is just wrapped around you. Right? He desires daily to communicate with you. How is he communicating with you? What is God saying to you? What is God putting in you? What form of communication is he using? I could tell you that no matter the form of communication, I promise you this, no matter the form of communication that God is using to speak to you, it's a communication of love. If it is anything other than a communication of love, understand it is not the Lord. Because God always speaks to us in communication of love. When he tells you that you are amazing and spectacular, that's a communication of love. Well, what about discipline? Amen. When he corrects you, when he convicts you, when he disciplines you, when he spanks you, right, spiritually, that is a communication of love. When he pulls you up out of the filth of your sin and places you on that solid foundation of him, that is a communication of love. So my prayer today, as this isn't going to be a long, a long message, my prayer today is that although the message may be shorter, I pray that you would take that extra time to, to ask, seek, and listen the different forms of communication that Almighty is wanting to communicate with you today. That's my prayer. My prayer is that, that you begin to actually listen to the different forms of communication that he's speaking to you in. Because here's what I know, and I know this from experience. When we begin to listen to him, that's when we would then believe in confidence we will believe in confidence that if God said it, then indeed he's going to do it. Right? We see in Philippians, uh, one, uh, Philippians chapter 1 verse 6, it says this, Being confident of this, being confident of this, that he, meaning uh, uh, Jesus, uh, uh, God Almighty, that he who began a good work in you, will carry it out to completion until the day of Jesus Christ. So he will carry this out in completion to the day of Jesus Christ. We have to begin to grab a hold of that. That's what our God wants to do for us. And when we actually begin to hear him, 
That's when we will quickly realize that we are not the mistakes that we've made. We are not the failures that we've had in our life. We are not what other people have done to us. We are not what other people have said to us. We are not those, those negative thoughts that we think of ourselves, but that we are a child of God. And he who begin that work in you will complete that work in you. He says that. That's when we can begin to, to uh, uh, um, um, confidently realize that he is madly and passionately in love with us when we hear him. When we hear him, that's when we will with confidence know that we are more than a conqueror. When we hear him, that's when we will know that we are the righteousness of Christ Jesus. That's when we know that. And in these, these insane, crazy dreams, these, these spectacular and, and miraculous things that he has been putting inside of you that you know are from God. <clears throat> because you know that you don't have the mindset to think these, dream these, or even imagine these. <clears throat> when these things begin to take place, it's because, it's because you're listen, you have listened to him. And I pray that you would get back to that place where those dreams begin to take over again and consume you. Right? So many of us have had these dreams, but for some reason, for whatever uh, things happen to us in life, we begin to allow life to overshadow these things that God has already put inside of us. But scripture says... In confidence that he who began the work in you will carry it out to completion until the day of Jesus Christ. We have to begin to grab this. That whatever it is that has caused you to doubt, you can go from doubt to confidence in Christ Jesus. That those spectacular and miraculous dreams that he put inside of you, he has not given up on those. And if he hasn't given up on those, then you, how dare you, how dare you in Jesus' name give up on those? Because in confidence, what he has already put inside of you, he's going to see that, that he carries it out. And when we hear him, we would have the confidence of knowing that what he told us before, the dreams he has given us before, he's telling us now. He's given us those dreams now. But we have to understand as a people is God is not like us. He doesn't change his mind because we messed up. Oftentimes, we, you hear people say, God told me this, and they go and do this for about a week, and then they say, ah, well, God changed their mind. No, no, no. God doesn't work like that. <coughs> God is not changing his mind. And what he desires to do with you and in you and for you, he is, uh, 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 the very first time you heard that, he is still today desiring to do those things in you, with you, and for you. <clears throat> we change. God doesn't change his mind. We change by what we want to do in him or through him, right? And we, we change by not listening. But if we listened to him, we'd grab a hold that God has not one time changed his mind with the anointing that he has for us, with how he set us apart, with how he wants to do great and insane, crazy things for us. So get in the mindset of desiring to listen to him. What is it that he's telling you again? Remember, if he started it with you, Scripture lets us know that he's going to carry out that work and complete that in you. And before you know what it is that he's telling you to do, before you know what it is that he wants to complete in you, before you know what it is that he has anointed and appointed you to do, before you know that you are uh, the mighty warrior that dwells inside of you, before you can confidently know that you are the righteousness of God Almighty, before you can confidently know that you are indeed more than a conqueror, you first have to hear from God. What form of communication is he desiring to speak to you in? What is it that God is saying to you?
And remember, as crazy as it seems, when, when you begin to hear him and he's calling you uh, to this thing or that thing, and it seems so crazy, it seems so insane, it sounds so scary, remember, as I close with this, remember that we serve the God of possibilities. And if my God has called you to it, then he's going to do the work to get you through it. He tells us in Philippians 1.6. Church, what is it that God is saying to you? What is it that God is putting inside of you? How is it that God is desiring to communicate with you today? Ask him. Seek him. And then please, in the mighty name of Jesus, please listen to him. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We praise you. We love you, Lord. We give you all honor and glory, my King. We just thank you so much for who you are, my Lord. God, I just pray right now for the people in the airwaves, my Lord Jesus, God, uh, um, that they would hear you as, uh, as you give me this message to deliver to them, that they would begin to ask that they would begin to seek, that they would begin to listen like never before and desire this communication with you, God. That they would have their minds open <clears throat> to understanding that you are not a God who is handcuffed by only one form of communication. But you are the God who creates all types of communication. Any and every communication that is out there <clears throat> has been created by your hand. So Lord, we thank you right now for what it is that you're doing, how it is that you're doing it, and the way that you're communicating to your beautiful sons and your beautiful daughters, Lord. God, I thank you that the work you have started in them, God, that your word has declared that you will complete it in them, my Lord. So God, I pray that they will seek you, that they will ask you, and that they will listen to you. God, uh, we thank you right now for anybody who does not know you, Jesus. God, that right now, Holy Spirit is hovering around them and over them. God, and he's desiring for them to open up their hearts right where they're sitting. And if that's anybody right now, you desire to communicate with Jesus. You desire to give your life to Jesus Christ and have this new, new relationship, this new life in Christ. Then simply open up your heart right where you're sitting. Lord, we thank you for those people who are desiring that. We thank you that Holy Spirit is no longer hovering over them, but he is now dwelling inside of them as they opened up themselves uh, 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 to Holy Spirit. God, I thank you for the names being written in the Lamb's Book of Life. We give you honor and glory for that, Lord. God, uh, let them to know, God, that not everything is going to be easy, that life's still going to be hard at times, but Lord, that they will always come out as more than a conqueror. And Lord, give them that desire to communicate with you, to talk to you, and to listen to you as you communicate back to them. So Lord, we thank you, we praise you, we love you. In Jesus' name, Amen. And church, you can uh, um, um, drop off tithes and offerings. Uh, you can go to PayPal. Uh, you can go to our website and uh, um, see where you can give online, uh, sourcechurch.org. But uh, you could share this message, man, with, uh, with some friends of yours that you know may be struggling or battling with uh, um, does God talk to them or not. And just know that he's talking to you. Know that he loves you. Know that we love you. And uh, we will be back meeting together uh, uh, um, as the body uh, momentarily. We just know that God is doing his thing and we're going to uh, be obedient to that. But church, we love you. God bless you guys and we praise God for y'all. Peace.